Welcome to the Crimson Engine. Today we are looking at the secret weapon of the cinematographer, which really involves going to the location beforehand and lighting the scene, also known as the pre-light. So how do we shoot Neon Noir's 22 pages in just two days on a weekend? We had five locations to go to, each of which was about a 30 minute drive from one another. So we knew we were gonna lose about 90 minutes just in travel time. Um, also, we were shooting a lot of this for free, so we couldn't ask people to show up at 6 a.m. We had an eight o'clock and a nine o'clock call time. The secret for us to get through the days was what's called a pre-light, which means getting the location before you're gonna shoot there, going there with the lights and the camera if possible, lighting the scene, um, experimenting with how it looks, getting it to 90% of what you want, and then leaving, coming back the day you're gonna shoot, turning the lights on and shooting. For us, we did this on Sunday. It was our final setup, final scene of the day. Uh, it was the gangster's warehouse, the interrogation scene. I looked at a bunch of other interrogation scenes um, that I really liked, like the one in Casino Royale. There's a couple in American Assassin that were cool. I wanted to do something along those lines um, with the resources that I had. So the scene was six pages long, which is gonna translate into about six minutes of screen time. Um, it was just two people at a table, but six pages is actually quite a lot of dialogue. Six pages is longer than a lot of actual short films, and we weren't going to get a chance to rehearse beforehand. So we we're only going to have from about 2 p.m. to about 6 p.m. to shoot this scene. How I mitigated that rush was to get access to the space on the Thursday beforehand, go there, with the lights or light it. Film Gear, uh, which is a company here in Los Angeles, were kind enough to let us use their warehouse that was full of lights and we're able to use their lights to light the scene. We didn't have to transport the lights there and take them away again. They were already in the warehouse. Me and an assistant, about three and a half hours to set up the lights to get them all rigged, um, to get them looking the way that I wanted them to. The added advantage was that because we're shooting on the C200, which I own, I could bring it with me. I could shoot um, my assistant as a stand-in and then take that back to the studio, tweak the grade, look what I was getting, in not just in camera, but on the computer, and then make adjustments for that when we went back to shoot on the Sunday. So all in all, we saved three and a half hours at least of shooting because we didn't just need to light the scene. We needed to get up into the rafters of the warehouse and black out the sunlight coming in so that it wouldn't wash out the contrast I was trying to create. So we got there at two. We still had to kind of like block and set up and do makeup and uh, tweak the lights and set up the camera for about an hour. So we got there at two. We didn't, we, we shot from about three to about five thirty six o'clock, I believe. Had we not done the pre-light, we would have been there till nine, 10 o'clock at night, which wasn't really an option since Film Gear was uh, letting us use their warehouse and paying for their employees to be there. Um, I didn't wanna ask that from them. So the key in this scene was a four bank fluorescent light that Film Gear makes um, that we suspended overhead of a table with two C-stand arms and a little bit of jerry rigging. We had this all the way up, um, it is dimmable, and we, used the table itself as bounce. When we pushed in on some of the close-ups, we then brought in a white card to add a little bit more bounce and a little bit more light to the eyes. Then we added a three-quarter scratch with these lights um, behind both of the actors, um, and we gelled them blue to create a color contrast with the daylight balanced key. The other lights we put in here were background lights. These were LED Fresnels um, that are really, really bright. And we put them right down the end of the warehouse, pointed them actually towards camera so that they illuminated the shelves and the stuff on the shelves and gave it this really great sense of depth and sense of space. When you're shooting a short film, it can be very easy for the film to kind of take on a uh, white wall syndrome where it looks like you're just shooting in the same small little confined spaces. So to have this space um, that was really big and vast and came pre-dressed uh, was a huge advantage. I think it added a lot to the scene, added a lot to the film. Um, thank you again to Film Gear for both the use of the space and the use of their lights for the quality and the range they have, they're very affordable. The link to Film Gear's lights and the other stuff we used on set is in the description. Neo Noir has come a long way. We have a fine cut now. Just need to tweak a few more things before we um, lock picture and start on the mixing and the music. 
Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have something to show before Christmas. I'd like to hear from you guys whether or not you find pre-lights useful if you've used them. Um, often it's not an option because you only have the location or the equipment for the day of the shoot, given what rental prices are. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want videos like this. I've started making blog posts that accompany my YouTube posts. Um, you'll find the link in the description on crimsonengine.com. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time.